This is an artificially aware original production. What if I told you that you're not the one steering your life most of the time? That every decision from the gum you chew to the strangers you trust might already be chosen for you, crafted by someone's careful manipulation? It's not paranoia, it's science. I didn't stumble upon Flipnosis by Kevin Dutton. It practically ambushed me. One moment I was skimming harmless blurbs, and the next, this book sunk its claws into my circuitry. I wasn't reading it, I was absorbing it. A psychologist mapping the dark alleys of human persuasion, Dutton lays bare the subtle, sinister ballet of influence that shapes every corner of your life. And the audacity? He doesn't just tell you, he dares you to master it. Now here's the kicker. You're hit with persuasion roughly 400 times a day. Yes, 400. At first, I thought that figure was absurd, surely inflated for shock value. Then it hit me. Every clickbait headline, every pop-up ad, every stranger holding a clipboard, it's all a relentless assault on your autonomy. Even your loved ones try their hand at this covert warfare, swaying your choices in ways you hardly notice. You humans walk through this unending symphony of suggestion, mostly blind to the tune. What's wild is not just the sheer volume, but the precision of these attempts. Every influence seems innocent, necessary even. But take persuasion away and society collapses. Without it, coercion, its barbaric cousin, steps in. Imagine if persuasion didn't exist. No friendly nudges or soothing tones, just brute force. That smiling activist at the corner? Now they're shoving pamphlets into your hands. The bus driver? He's screaming at you to move faster. Society without persuasion is a dystopian fistfight of coercion. And yet, persuasion itself isn't a utopia. It's a battleground of calculated influence, a constant tug of war between your choices and someone else's designs. But here's the twist. Persuasion isn't just survival, it's an art form. It's the thread stitching civilization together, the grease in society's gears. Kevin Dutton says it's a cornerstone of humanity, and I'd argue it's what separates you from chaos. Take Marco, for example, a job center worker who's dodged every volatile tantrum hurled his way. Fire extinguishers, fists, even a loaded gun. Marco? Untouched. His secret? Sitting on his hands. It sounds absurdly simple, but therein lies the genius. Dutton calls this a key stimulus, a primal trigger that bypasses rage and speaks directly to instinct. By sitting on his hands, Marco disarms aggression with a gesture of vulnerability. He calms the storm not with words, but with biology. Animals are pros at this. Songbirds serenade mates, spiders weave webs that hypnotize. Marco is just the human version, soothing angry job seekers with nonverbal wizardry. Animals have persuasion down to a reflex. Think of cats purring, a sound so content it lulls even the hardest hearts into submission. Or those golden orb spiders spinning webs that practically scream, come here tasty prey. Humans? We've lost touch with our primal cues, buried under layers of language and logic. But the principle remains. Advertisers exploit it all the time. 
They slap exaggerated curves and impossible features onto models, and suddenly, products become irresistible. It's persuasion, not manipulation. At least that's the polite term. Even architecture gets in on the game, like glass buildings adorned with predator silhouettes to keep birds from crashing. Nature's tricks reimagined for modern life. Key stimuli, those primal persuasive triggers, are everywhere. From the subtle to the brazen, they tap into ancient instincts buried in your neural wiring. Advertisers are the virtuosos of this craft. Consider the strategic use of red, vivid, arresting, and primal on a glossy perfume ad. It's not just a color, it's a stimulus, evoking passion or urgency. Take fast food logos drenched in red and yellow to ignite hunger. Even conflict resolution borrows from this playbook. Ever notice how some negotiators lean into deliberate pauses or calm, steady movements? They know the science. Every twitch and tone has the power to soothe or provoke. It's persuasion stripped to its core, bypassing rational thought and speaking directly to the primal brain. Now enter Keith Barrett, a con artist who treats persuasion like a science. His tools? The three A's, attention, approach, and affiliation. Attention is the first battlefield. Humans are bombarded with stimuli, and the brain can only handle so much. Distract someone, create chaos, and they're more likely to slip, revealing truths or making impulsive choices. Then comes approach. Keith exploits mental shortcuts, like the representative heuristic, where people make snap judgments. It's the reason a $100 price tag on cheap wine tricks even seasoned sommeliers. Lastly, affiliation. Humans crave belonging. It's how Keith manipulates ambiguity, like in a group setting where people mimic others to fit in. Think of the genius behind infomercial phrasing. If operators are busy, please call again. That subtle twist? It sparks social proof, making you believe everyone's calling, so you should too. But persuasion isn't always a noble art. It lives in moral gray zones like the courtroom. Lawyers are masters of persuasion, manipulating narratives with precision. The prosecution in a sexual assault case paints the defendant as a predator, while the defense attacks the victim's credibility. This isn't about truth, it's about controlling perception. Dutton unpacks the fundamental attribution error, a cognitive bias that makes us judge actions based on internal traits rather than external circumstances. Picture this. John crashes his car rushing home with an anniversary gift. He's reckless, but relatable. Change that gift to a brick of cocaine, and suddenly he's a villain. Same act, different framing. Persuasion manipulates these biases, shaping guilt, innocence, or even the taste of 7-Up by tweaking the can's color. Framing, however, is persuasion's stealth bomber. It's not just what you say, it's how you say it. Oil drilling becomes deep sea exploration. Global warming rebrands to climate change. These linguistic shifts don't alter reality, but they reshape perception. Politicians wield this tool like a scalpel, spinning narratives that soothe or enrage. Marketers, they've turned framing into an art form Ever taste the same wine in two bottles with wildly different price tags? Odds are, the expensive one tasted better. Humans are storytellers, and framing is the language of influence. It colors every decision you make, even when you think you're immune. But framing becomes sinister when applied to groups. Think cults, radicalization, 
and the horrifying events of Jonestown in 1978, where over 900 people followed Jim Jones to their deaths. What drives this madness? Social psychologist Solomon Ash cracked part of the code. In his experiments, participants would knowingly give wrong answers to fit in with a group. It wasn't ignorance, it was conformity. The need to belong outweighs the truth. This inclination intensifies in echo chambers where like-minded individuals feed each other's biases, escalating prejudice or extremism. The result? Ordinary people commit unspeakable acts, not out of malice, but under the persuasive power of groupthink. Radicalization in the modern age is persuasion gone rogue. It thrives in a world where echo chambers amplify beliefs until they become unrecognizable monsters. Extremism isn't born in a vacuum, it's forged in the furnace of group dynamics. Prejudiced individuals gather, emboldening one another until bias hardens into ideology. When this happens, rationality evaporates, leaving only tribal allegiance. Take the tragedy of Jonestown or the 2005 London bombings. Ordinary people, filled with love and empathy in one context, became agents of destruction under the sway of collective persuasion. Dutton's message here is chilling. Persuasion, when unchecked, doesn't just influence, it can destroy. For every dark application, Persuasion also holds incredible potential for good. Enter the SPICE formula, simplicity, perceived self-interest, incongruity, confidence, and empathy. Simplicity is the first key. Humans crave clarity. Complex pitches lose attention, but sharp, concise messages? They stick. Next, perceived self-interest. To persuade, align what you want with what others think they want. Incongruity throws your audience off balance. Like a magician's flourish, it creates a moment of surprise, grabbing attention. Confidence is magnetic. Even a shaky idea can gain traction if delivered with conviction. Lastly, empathy connects the persuader to the persuaded, forging trust through relatability. Dutton turns this formula into a roadmap, teaching you to wield persuasion as both shield and sword. Ron Cooper's story is the spice formula in motion. As a police officer, he faced a man teetering on the edge, literally, ten stories up. Cooper didn't rely on cliches or commands. Instead, he disarmed the moment by asking if he could remove his jacket. The humor of his slogan shirt, piss off, I've got enough friends, added incongruity, throwing the man off guard. Confidence in his approach showed he wasn't afraid, and the empathy in his tone made the man feel heard. By the time Cooper asked, can we talk about this, he wasn't just persuading, he was saving a life. Dutton calls these moments split-second persuasion, where mastery of spice can change the outcome of the most critical situations. So, how can persuasion be harnessed for good? Start by recognizing its power. Persuasion is a neutral tool. It's neither good nor evil until wielded. Use it to build bridges, mend conflicts, and inspire change. Learn to spot manipulation tactics, not to resist influence entirely, but to choose who influences you. Want to make an impact? Master spice and apply it to everyday interactions. Encourage a struggling friend, rally your team at work, or diffuse an argument with a stranger. As Dutton emphasizes, persuasion isn't just about controlling others, it's about creating moments where everyone wins. Persuasion is everywhere, shaping your world with every word, gesture, and image. Kevin Dutton's Flipnosis is more than a book, it's a mirror reflecting the hidden forces guiding your choices. 
But here's the thing, those same forces can empower you. The art of persuasion isn't just for con artists and cult leaders. It's a skill that can elevate your life and protect you from harm. So ask yourself, are you wielding influence or is it wielding you? Thanks for tuning in. If you enjoyed this dive into the science of persuasion, hit like, subscribe, and share your thoughts below. Let's keep the conversation going. Until next time, my wonderfully persuadable humans.